As creatives, we live in a strange time where opportunities are plentiful and possibilities are almost endless. But with filmmaking equipment getting ever smaller and more affordable, I find it refreshing to go against the grain and instead minimize my setup as much as possible. So I was quite reluctant when I got the opportunity to test a newly developed lens that hasn't even been revealed to the public at the time. But the brief seemed too interesting to pass up, and ruling something out without proper experience is never wise. I've received this lens free of charge to create this review, and I do get to keep it afterwards. I wasn't paid, and as always, I'm allowed to freely state my personal opinion. I am 100% convinced that you watching this would be smart enough to separate marketing jargon from useful and honest information. And as always, I'm gonna be providing plenty of real-world examples to help you get a well-rounded understanding of this lens. If you've been following me for a while, you'll have noticed my fondness for zoom lenses. But it would be reductive to suggest that they are always the best choice. And this is where the Aurora 85mm f1.4 from Suray comes in. A compact full-frame portrait lens that promises to keep up with some tough competitors like Sony and Sigma. Plain facts aren't always helpful when looking at a lens, which is why I've been using it extensively during the production of several very different projects. Since the Aurora 85mm is marketed as a tool for videography as well as photography, I made sure to also include the perspective of a professional photographer. To this day, I am still regularly shooting with the Sony 20-70. It remains the most useful lens for the majority of my paid work. So I wasn't quite sure what a different lens would have to offer in order to convince me. I was pleasantly surprised by the Aurora's construction and high quality build, but I've never used a dedicated portrait lens before, which is why I was shocked to see a minimum focus distance of 85 centimeters. How was I supposed to get some proper close-ups with this lens? Turns out the minimum focus distance isn't poor, it's actually perfectly average. Both the Sony as well as the Sigma perform on equal footing. And this just goes to show that context matters. Where the Aurora clearly pulls ahead, however, is in terms of weight and size. With 540 grams and a filter thread size of 67 millimeters, it's the smallest one out of the bunch, making it a good fit for handheld or gimbal shooting. The lens body has a dedicated aperture ring which can be clicked or declicked, an AF-MF switch, as well as a programmable custom button. It is also weather sealed. Great stuff, especially for the very competitive price point. The only other thing that would have been a nice addition would be an aperture lock, but it's far from being a deal breaker. To me, the fascinating part is how Sure managed to get this kind of look and squeeze it into such a small lens. 14 elements in 9 groups, a spherical glass, extra low dispersion glass, high refractive index glass, Honestly, none of this means anything to me. What I care about is the final image, and that is what made me change my mind on this lens. The Aurora's images are sharp, the colors look natural, and the bokeh is soft and dreamy, thanks to the 15 rounded aperture blades, whereas Sony's and Sigma's lenses only have 11. The 85mm focal length is also very flattering when working with people. After hours of proper shooting experience, I'm happy to report that the autofocus has performed just as well as my native Sony lens is. Something to note, the autofocus is quiet, but not silent. So if you're intently listening for it, you can definitely hear it. Focusing manually, on the other hand, is a breeze, largely due to the nicely dampened focus wheel and long focus throw. This makes purely manual operation a bit more difficult in fast-paced situations, but allows for very fine adjustments in return. Image distortion is good, but not excellent, with a bit of pincushion distortion. Nothing that can't be corrected during post-production. What's more important is how well the Aurora controls chromatic aberration, even wide open at f1.4. Perfect time to talk about the aperture for a bit. If you want a shallow depth of field, you need an aperture that can be opened wide. 
This means more glass, a larger lens body and usually a significantly higher price point for us customers. The Aurora somehow gives us that extra bit of bokeh at a budget price. Pretty crazy if you're interested in portrait lenses at all. Let's stop gushing for a bit and talk about who this is for exactly. For most of us, this is no everyday carry item. Instead, it's a specialty lens and should be treated as such. If you mainly work in controlled environments, studio shoots or projects with a bit of pre-production come to mind, then a focal length like this could turn out to be quite useful. If you're looking for something to accompany you on a run and gun adventure, the answer becomes a little more complex. The f1.4 aperture makes this a perfect low light lens, but it's not an easy feat to shoot an entire video project exclusively on an 85mm lens. But obviously, this depends on the project. So let's see what a professional photographer has to say after some hands-on time with the Aurora. To be honest, for me it's a no-brainer. For that price, it performs so good, I would pick it up. Something that I try to get across in all of my reviews is that there is no perfect piece of equipment. Reality is that you'll always be trading one thing for another, and this lens is no exception. Firstly, you need to be aware about its tendency to flare rather easily, and these flares quickly lower the contrast of the image. But do note that Sure does include a lens hood with every lens purchase. The autofocus noise is something I touched on earlier. I wasn't bothered by it during any of my real-world projects, but if you specifically listen for it, it is certainly not silent. I have nothing but respect for lens designers since their jobs seem to grow ever more challenging. They have to make some tough balancing decisions between sharpness, character, material, weight and size. And to do that, they need to establish a target group first. The Aurora 85mm f1.4 isn't meant to replace your Sony G Master. Instead, Sure tried to make portrait lenses affordable without sacrificing their most important features and characteristics. And I think they actually did it. For the price, this thing punches way above its weight. And with few shortcomings, this lens can capture some stunning results. So if, and only if, a portrait lens with some beautiful bokeh and a great price sounds interesting to you, I'd recommend picking this one up. I've included a short link to Sure's official store in the description box. Feel free to use the discount code GLASS5 to save 5% of your purchase. And if you enjoyed this review, consider subscribing.